Sumo. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. Hamjambo. I am very delighted to have an opportunity to talk to you today. But my speech has already been made ready by the general and uh, the other chief guests, Dr. Fazam Kamalabadi, they have spoken for me. May you stand up, Dr. Kamalabadi, to be a you made my day today. I don't have much to add, but today we are in Festac, we are opening Festac. It's a festive occasion. And therefore, we are in the great city of Kisumu. Kisumu Hoi! Kisumu Hoi! Kisumu, Kisumu, Dalawa, Kisumu, Kisumu, Dalawa, Kisumu, Dalawa, Kisumu, Kisumu, Dalawa, Kisumu, Kisumu, Dalawa, Kisumu, Kisumu, Dalawa, Kisumu, Dalawa, Kisumu, Kisumu, Dalawa. Nyanza Hoi! Kenya Hoi! Africa, hoi! Africa, ka, kanindo tieno, katingo wia tuga nene wanga, maya tuga maka meno njela, mauku poga kodo dipoka ketu dinda. Africa, hoi! Africa, hoi! It is a great pleasure. Africa, good morning. Bonjour, bonjour, Africa. It is a great pleasure to join so many Africans from across the continent and the world to celebrate Africa and its culture. We welcome those from different parts of the world who have made time to be here and to see how it was and how it is are the cradle of humankind as we celebrate our culture. We are all at home. It has been proven scientifically that the first humanoid species was here in this part of the world. And that's why anybody who comes here is welcome back home. I wish to take this opportunity to congratulate the city of Kisumu for bringing this great event home. I equally thank the organizers for staging a show that is designed to leave a mark. Indeed, Africa is coming of age. We are here to celebrate African culture as expressed in food, music, stories, dances, business, fashion, and sports, among others. This meeting is very much in line with aspiration number five, the Agenda 2063 of the African Union, which envisages an Africa with a strong cultural identity, a common heritage, shared values and ethics, and focused on Pan-Africanism. The aspirations number five Commit to tap Africa's rich heritage and culture to ensure that the creative arts are major contributors to the continent's growth and transformation. We have to admit that as a continent, we have not invested enough in creative industries and we have not used the industry as we should to unite our people and integrate the continent. At events like this, we reaffirm what we often take for granted or even doubt, that Africans are one people. There's nothing you are going to find here in Kenya that looks very, very different and unimaginable to a person from Senegal, Zambia, or Egypt. In a way, 
You are unique when it comes to culture. When you go to Asia, there are many different kinds of Eastern culture. You meet the Indian, the Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Vietnamese, and so on. You go to Western culture, you meet equally many different cultures. German, English, French, American. But when it comes to Africa, there's a strong sense of uniformity. Wherever Africans are, however removed from the motherland, they all tend to put the family as the main reference for the individual. And they all tend to agree that society or community is more important than the individual. We all distill our lessons and transmit our experiences. Uh, we agree that distilled knowledge is beneficial for our societies to succeeding generations. May these traditions never die among the African people. May they unite and not divide us. It is, however, a painful contradiction and a matter of great concern that despite the near uniformity in our beliefs and traditions, Africa is more divided than these societies with multiple cultures. You have never harnessed our music, food, stories, and family connections to deliberately pursue unity and advance our cause as a people. The Congolese music is enjoyed across the entire continent, just like the music from Cameroon, Nigeria, Tanzania. Ethiopian, Somalian, Nigerian dishes are getting enjoyed across the continent. But is, that is where it ends. Good food, good music, and nothing more. You have never deployed these tools for, for, for oneness. We are clinging hard to borders and boundaries that were set up by colonialists and define things that should unite us by countries of origin. It is a pity that 60 years since most of our countries attained independence, we are still divided and proud to be divided with the languages of our colonial, colonial masters. That is Anglophones, Francophones, and Lusophones. At that time, the owners of those colonial languages are forging a united Europe. There's no Anglophone or Francophone in Europe, but there is Anglophone and Francophone here in Africa. What a pity. Africa has to change. Escalated unity is the way to go. The cultural ties that bind us is a great starting point on the path to unity. For historical reasons, Europe is our closest associate around the world. We are not going to engage meaningfully with a uni unified region when we act as a host of tiny individual nations. Integration is an idea whose time has come. Now, I keep on saying all the times that we need Africa developed by Africans. But we have got two categories of Africans. They are Afro-optimists and Afro-pessimists. Afro-pessimists are those who have given hope on Africa. They say that Africa is a lost cause. And they talk about what has been visited upon Africa by our colonial masters. Afro-optimists, on the other hand, are those people who believe in the ability of the African people to develop Africa. These are the people who believe in Pan-Africanism Pan ideology. Africa is the richest continent on planet Earth in terms of resources. 
It is a paradox that the richest is also the poorest when it comes to living conditions is the people. This, the paradox was we must resolve. We cannot continue all the time to live in our colonial past and blame colonial uh, masters. We should also not allow ourselves to be put in the bondage of other international institutions which were formed without African participation, which have continued to misguide development of the continent. We must take the development of their continent in the hands of our own people and move forward. This is what is required to be able to use all the materials that we have here for the benefit of our people. And this is possible. It is possible to turn what we have into wealth and therefore create a conducive environment for developing the country, in the continent. It's a pity that today African youth drown in the Mediterranean on their way to greener pastures in Europe. This is a trend that we need to arrest by creating a neighboring environment on the continent, by creating opportunities for employment right here in the African continent. That way we'll be able to save our people, to, to, to salvage our people. We need to look at ourselves as Africans, and Africa for Africans. This is the reason why I've uh, accepted the challenge by my friend, long-term friend, General Oga Papa Olusegundo Basanjo. Papa has also been a mentor to us. He's told you how we met. Papa used to run an institution called African Leadership Forum. In that forum, he was training young African leaders to try to impart on them experience. He took me and the governor of Kisumu to his village town of or Ota, next to Lagos. And they have brought us together with the retired president of Africa, President Kenneth Kaunda, President Tumani Toure of Mali, President Boyoya of, of Burundi, who are given us experience of challenges in leadership. So you are well taught. He took us again to other places, as you can see, he took Anyang to Singapore to go and see the Singaporean experience. As a result of that, when I was a prime minister, I took my ministers to Singapore and I told them this is going to be the last time anybody with leadership in Kenya is going to come to Singapore. We want to go back to Kenya and do what these people have done in their country. And we came back and in that grand coalition government, we do something in this country that has never been done before. And today it is accepted that the grand coalition government was the government, the best government that Kenyans have seen since independence. So we believe it can also be done on the African continent. Africa, as you know, cannot move forward when it cannot even trade with itself. As we are speaking today, the intra-African trade stands at 15%. Inter-European trade stands at 70%. Intra-Asian trade stands at 60%. Even South America, 35%. Africa, only 15%. What are the impediments? The impediments are one, non-tariff barriers imposed by different countries on the continent. Secondly, lack of infrastructure in the continent, making it very difficult for goods to move from one country to the other country. 
And that is why I said, we need to take this animal called infrastructure head on. The Trans-African Highways, the Trans-African High Speed Network, the open skies in the continent, and so on. As things stand today, to travel within the African continent by air is a problem. They are taxing you to fly over air, open air. And you must get a license to fly over one country to the other country. They don't do that in Europe anymore. And to travel in Africa, you need so many visas. My friend, and our friend with the general, Aliku Dangote, one of the biggest African entrepreneurs, says that for him to travel across the continent, he needs 35 visas. His French counterpart, who's a business like himself, does not need a visa because he's having a French passport. With a French passport, you don't need a visa to travel across Africa. With a Nigerian passport, you need 35 visas to travel across the continent. What a shame. So we are going to introduce African Union visas that can enable you to travel across the whole continent without requiring to have any visas at all. Will it make it easier for people to, tra to travel, to trade within the continent of Africa? We will also open borders so that goods can move freely. We will work towards construction of the African High Speed Railway Network with African road networks. We will also address the issue of energy. Energy is a major impediment to development of the continent. Yes, Africa has got abundance of energy sources. Hydro, solar, wind, geothermal, you name it. It's all available on the African continent. Yet energy is very expensive. We will make it cheap and accessible to the majority of our people. We will also ensure that we will tackle the issue of climate change. Africa is a victim in, when it comes to the issue of climate change. Africa only emits less than 5% of greenhouse gases. But Africa suffers the consequences of climate change. Many African countries today live between twin disasters, floods and drought. We need to find ways of dealing with this. But Africa also needs to be compensated by the offenders. To negotiate as individual countries, you'll get nowhere. But when we negotiate as Africa, we'll be able to get adequate compensation for the destruction of the environment. Africa is also home to the second biggest carbon sink in the world. How does Africa get compensated? And how do we also regreen Africa? Those are challenges that we must face. So I want to end my conversation today by telling the story of the African lion. Africa, the home of the lion. In Nigeria, you have got the ego. In Cameroon, they have got the indomitable lion. In Senegal, they have the land of Teranga. In Morocco, they have got the Atlas lands. In Kenya, you have got the Kenyan Simba. See, they say the lion is the king of the jungle. So the, when the king of the jungle roars, all the other animals uh, uh, crouch. The African lion is sending a message, which was said earlier on by my friend. This message is to the Asian tiger. 
the African lion is saying to the Asian tiger, you've danced alone on the stage for far too long. It is time that you quit the stage. The European bear retreated a long time ago to the polars and is freezing there in the, in the North Pole. The American panther is also on the retreat. I'm the African lion. I've been asleep in the jungles of the Congo. But now I'm awake, surrounded by the mighty Congo River, the mighty Nile, the Niger, the Gambia, the Limpopo, the Zambezi. I'm bound on the east by the peaks of Mount Kilimanjaro and Mount Kenya. The West by Atlas Mountains, and I'm sitting on African gold, African bauxite, African iron and copper ore, African diamonds, African oil, African lithium, African coltan, African uranium. And I intend to transform all these raw materials into wealth for my people and make the, the, make the 21st century truly an African century. Message from African land to the Asian tiger. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Your Excellency. May we accord this 